If you have money in a bank account or a savings account right now, then this is one of the most important videos that you will see this year because we've just had a perfect example of something that I mentioned. I knew what had happened, but of course the government denied it. They've now done a U-turn and put a different spin on it and actually said, okay, yes, it was intentional, but we meant it for a good thing. And they didn't realize it was gonna result in the collapse of so many businesses in this country. A lot of infrastructure has ground to a halt. And now you're seeing a huge bank run right throughout the country. But not only that, we're gonna talk about a lot of other banks, a lot of these red flags, a lot of these alarm bells that we're seeing at the moment, because we can learn lessons from all of these events so that we know what's most likely to happen in our country, be that the USA, the UK, maybe you're in Europe, you have the European Central Bank, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, wherever you're watching this from, you can learn some valuable lessons to protect your money in the bank from this video. So let's get right into it then. Let's get started with this major event that has taken place and how we can learn from this. And then we're going to go into a lot of the Western nations and, and talk about what's happening there. You may have already heard about some of these banks that are about to collapse. I'm just going to talk through a couple of these so that you can see where there are risks. Maybe one of your banks is highlighted here. But the main thing that I want to really talk about is, in fact, let's go to the shared screen so you can see a visual representation of this first. Okay, so we've talked about central bank digital currencies before. And the last time we looked at this, we didn't have as many launches as we have now. In fact, let's look at April 2021, when we had very few central bank digital currencies that had actually launched. But then we got into pilot stage, which is this green bar here. Again, only 24% had launched. Development then was just 19%. Now you fast forward to December 2022, so only three months ago here, and watch how this changes. Already we're up to 10% who have now launched, 16% in pilot phase, and 30% in development. Now, let me show you why this is key, because this is what we are going to learn from today. Who is it that has most recently launched? That is Nigeria. And what is going on in Nigeria then? Well, nothing good at all. We'll get onto that because this is a major, I would say, scandal and one that we can pay attention to and learn a very valuable lesson for our country and our bank accounts. So let's look then at, we have those that have launched. This is who is in pilot stage. And remember the BRICS nations who are accumulating gold at a rapid rate in order to create their own gold-backed currency. Well, what is the B? That stands for Brazil. So let's bring that in. That is Brazil. What is the R? That is Russia. The I is India. The C is China. And the S is South Africa. So they are your BRICS nations who are way ahead of the West. So who's under development? The United Kingdom. I still have a forecast on that for a launch in 2025. We have Canada. We have the United States. And of course, we have the European Union. So that will be the ECB, European Central Bank. Now, why am I sharing all of this with you? Well, because Nigeria is absolutely crucial to this and understanding what is going to happen next. So what was it they said was a coincidence and other governments got involved, other you know, commentators got involved. They said that it was a complete coincidence that there was a bank run in Nigeria where people couldn't get their cash. So what they've now done is they've done a U-turn. So let me read this out. The Central Bank of Nigeria said it redesigned the higher denomination banknotes to replace the dirty cash in circulation. We heard this same term, this same tactic during COVID. Cash was dirty, we had to get rid of it. Also to tackle inflation. Well, again, changing banknotes does not tackle inflation because that is the expansion of the currency supply. Curb counterfeiting, okay, we'll give them that one. I'm sure that is legitimate. But here's the main one. 
promote a cashless society. It hoped the redesign would bring some of the money being hoarded by individuals and companies back into the financial system. So what does this mean then? What can we learn from this? Well, it's quite obvious, isn't it? Nigeria deliberately, their central bank, deliberately redesigned the banknotes, the cash, at the same time as they launched this central bank digital currency. They've said it in black and white there. They did it in order to get people to bring in this cash, which was now no longer legal tender, that they're saying the hoarders. You see the language that they're using here, hoarders. So they wanted the people to bring the cash in while it was still legal tender and then swap it for the new currency. But what did they do? They deliberately created a shortage of the new currency. So when you brought in the old currency, which remember, it's just, it's just paper. You know, it's, it's not worth anything. There is no intrinsic value to the paper. So what happened, they made it illegal so that when people brought it into the bank to exchange it, they were able to deposit the money in the bank, but then they couldn't withdraw at that point any new cash because there was a limited supply. Simple economics 101, you limit the supply and typically this will increase value, but that's not what happened here. Businesses have just completely ground to a halt. They're, a lot of them are closed. Some people are talking about how their clients have just cut in half. Grocery stores are only accepting cash in a lot of places. So it's caused a massive issue. The government is being very slow to tackle it and deal with it. Why? It's quite obvious. They're doing it because they are hoping that they're gonna break the will of the people and they're gonna reach the tipping point and push them over into using this new digital currency. But the people are staying pretty resilient and they're not moving over to this digital currency. They want the cash. Now, let me give you another example and then we'll see how we can apply this. I mean, I've got pages and pages of other things we can talk about as well, where a lot of these banks are very close to collapse. But the other example I wanna give you is China. So this was in Henan province. And I did a full video about this. So I'm not gonna go over it all again, but what I talked about was how they use the digital ID. So this is what the West wants you to have. They want you to have a digital ID as well, a digital passport, which connects everything in your life. Um, even your social credit score, your carbon credit score of the future to make sure that you're a good little citizen. Oh yes. Well, what China did was they abused this system. So you had your digital ID and they used it during COVID, during lockdowns and everything else. And even though these people had a green pass, what happened was they went to get onto the transport to go to Henan province where the bank just wouldn't pay anyone any money. All of their savings just got locked up and they couldn't access it. So people just couldn't tra travel. They couldn't get on a train, they couldn't get on a plane, they couldn't do any form of travel because their digital ID went red. Even though they passed their test, they, the ID went red to stop them traveling. And this again is some of the dangers of this new digital system that's being created because how are you gonna spend any of your money or get access to any of your money or savings if it's just numbers on a screen in a bank account? Especially they keep talking about this catastrophic cyber attack event that's gonna happen in the next two years, so more like 18 months now. And they keep saying this could completely reset, their favorite word, the financial system and nobody will know how much they've got because they, they don't print out statements, they keep all online. By the way, a little tip, always print out your statements every month, whether that's your bank accounts, your savings accounts, your investment accounts, if you hold you know, gold and silver and bullion and you know whatever else, bonds and all sorts of other things. Make sure you print these out and keep them in a folder. I actually, uh, probably a little OTT on it, I do two lots, so I, I print out two lots of folders and they're stored in different places because I just don't ever wanna be caught out again. You remember what happened with Barclays where they froze my bank accounts and then claimed that I had never had bank accounts with them. And luckily I had it all printed out so I could prove it. And that's the only way I was able to get my money back from the bank. So this is one of the reasons why in my private community, I'm always drilling on 
about how to protect your money and diversify to avoid these things. Because if you've got a lot of money just sat there in the bank, you are taking a massive gamble. I'll, I'll just be honest with you. You are just really, really gambling there. You're gambling on the fact that these banks are going to be safe and secure. And remember this video I made. If you haven't seen it, you can watch it on my channel. So just go on to my channel here. You'll see the home page. And you can either do a search in this bar here for FDIC or just scroll down. It was one month ago and it was this one here. Uh, it says critical. The FDIC just gave a dire warning to all Americans. So 430,000 views on that video. And what I talked about in that video was the FDIC meeting where they open. I don't know if they forgot they were being recorded or what, but they basically openly said there's going to be bank runs and that when it happens, they're just not going to be able to cover the money. Again, it was a month ago now. I can't remember the exact amount, but I think they said they had 1.3% coverage of all of the money. If the banks went down, they could only cover 1.3%. So it's obvious there just isn't enough money out there. Now, we've also had major warnings this week about Credit Suisse. So if you have funds in Credit Suisse or also check your pension, check any of your investment accounts, speak to your broker, whoever it is that looks after your, your funds, just check that you don't have any exposure to Credit Suisse because these guys, I mean, got to be careful what I say, but I think they're going down uh, personally. Their stock price has already lost 96% and they've taken massive losses, a, a significant decline by 443% year on year. Investors are just fleeing the company or should I say the bank, they're just pulling out all of their reserves. Archegos Capital Management as well have just uh, pulled out all of their funds. There's claims that Credit Suisse, again, I can't verify this, but it's been in the media this week, have been money laundering for the Bulgarian mafia. So you're talking huge funds if that is true. I'm not saying it is. It's just what the media is putting out this week. They also reduced employee headcount by 2,700. And here's the big alarm bell that I want you to pay very careful attention to. They are paying up to 7% interest right now on deposits. So they're actually paying more in deposits than they are charging in lending. What does that say to you? Well, it may be a you know what scheme going on there because how can you pay out more for deposits than you're charging in interest on loans and other such things? You can't. It's eventually going to collapse. You're relying on the new people. You see where this is going? coming in to fund the people that want to go out. So this is why I've mentioned in the last couple of weeks, don't get yourself locked in to these long term, whatever your bank's saying, because they're all fighting for your money right now. You know what? The last 10 years, they haven't cared at all about giving you a fair rate on your savings. Have they been giving you five, eight, ten percent on your savings? No, they've been giving you one percent, two percent, something like that. They act like they care and they value you as a customer, but they don't really. And this is because they've been awash with cash. But now, because there's so many other places for investors to put their money, people are starting to leave. And if you've taken my finance course, um, or if you haven't, the link is below in the description. It will teach you about all the different areas that you can actually put your money or my Patreon links below as well in the description. So you can actually see where I've put my money. Yes, I actually do show you where all of my money is allocated. So if you've got a bank saying, hey, John, Sarah, whatever, tie up your money with us for six to 12 months and we'll give you 4% or they'll, you know, trying to offer you a good rate. Just be very, very careful there because if your money is tied up and the bank starts to go down, there's just no way you're going to be able to get it out. And a lot of people won't be able to get their money out anyway, because this is why the banks are actually doing a lot of bank uh, branch closures so that they can limit it for the next time that there are bank runs. Just like what's happening in Nigeria and some other countries, we've seen bank runs. This will eventually happen in the West when the system begins to come down. And actually, I, I talked about on Friday how Metro Bank in the UK has just put out some media saying, oh, we're allocating all this new money so that you have confidence in us. A lot of banks are doing this at the moment. I just highlighted one of them, but they're putting aside money 
to show how strong they are and to give you confidence as depositors in the bank. Usually when that happens, you want to think the opposite. Why would they pay for media and PR and everything else to give confidence when no one was worried about it in the first place? It usually rings some alarm bells, so just be aware of that. Now the other one I wanna warn you about, well actually there's two, two main ones. So Silvergate Capital is uh, facing some real trouble that may collapse, I'm, in fact, I would don't mind saying I think it probably will collapse. They've had massive drawdowns of their assets. People are just fleeing with money. They a lot of crypto money as well. They fired 40% of their employees. Look, some companies can get away with firing some employees, but when you get to that sort of level 40%, that is just a company on life support just trying to survive. Their shares took a 55% drop. It was $200 a share less than 18 months ago. They're now down to $5 a share. There's also a filing with the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, because they are evaluating, uh, and I quote, their ability to continue as a going concern, which means they may have to file for bankruptcy. Citigroup also cut lots of jobs recently, and that's after JP Morgan Chase did the same, they cut hundreds of mortgage employees. Uh, Goldman Sachs as well have done their biggest round of job cuts ever. It's obvious, ladies and gents, what's going on here, blatantly obvious. And with the mortgage companies, this is simply because this is, I think it's the lowest amount of applications in 28 years right now across mortgages. What does that mean? It means you're gonna see a continued decline in the housing market. And then there's just one more bank I wanna bring your attention to them, and that is Wells Fargo. So they've just received from the CFPB a $3.7 billion penalty with $2 billion due to customers as compensation. Now, I won't get into all of that, but Wells Fargo have not been um, playing by the rule book, shall we say, hence they've got a fine. Of course, they always put out and spin media saying that they did nothing wrong and all this other stuff, but how can you get a, a, a fine of 3.7 billion with 2 billion of that being due to the, the customers who they, uh, well, let's just say didn't look after very well. It's, uh, it's a lot worse than that, but you can read up on it. I just have to be careful what I say because these banks and everything else, they despise me as it is for always unveiling all of these scams and everything else that they are doing. So I just have to be careful with what I say. But there are, at the moment, huge amounts of problems in the banking system. And just because I talked about FDIC, it doesn't mean that the UK and other places, your insurance programs are safe, because they're not. This is a huge problem, and I really think that you've got to learn from the lessons of Nigeria and what the government did there deliberately. I mean, it was so obvious, but people just thought, oh, I was just, you know, grasping at straws and making a conspiracy out of something that didn't exist. No, it was obvious. Why would you launch the digital currency, then say that the cash that everyone's got is now, you know, not legal tender? I, I, I wouldn't say the, the word illegal, but that might be too strong, but it's no longer legal tender. Why would you do that at the same time and then not prepare properly and not have enough banknotes in order to give out for people? It's obvious what they were doing. So if they've done it there in Nigeria, do you think they might do something similar in your country when they launch? I think it's highly likely. So I hope that was helpful for you today. Please, my friends, just protect your money as best you can. And if you don't know what to do, remember I've got links in the description, I've got my private community, I've got my finance course. Both of these things should help you dramatically. Thank you for watching, take care, God bless you and your family, and I will see you tomorrow.